Hello, welcome back to the fourth part of this tutorial series. Um, this tutorial today will be on search engine friendliness. Now, um, it, I mentioned in the last tutorial that this isn't strictly necessary for you to actually view if you believe that your um, your website is as search engine friendly as possible. But it's also quite interesting and it's probably for the better that you do understand what is required or what it helps improve your search engine friendliness and thus your search engine rank. Um, the first thing that will help is having a um, fast and reliable hosting package. Um, now obviously the best ones to get would be um, a dedicated sorry, a dedicated server which um, if you go to avh.co.uk there are some f quite good priced ones like um, this one here 14.99 it's a dedicated server I mean it, an amazing price um, or if you don't feel like getting dedicated at least try and get private or virtual private which at 9.99 a month isn't that bad either and now these packages do look quite a lot worse See, it says 20 gigabytes disk space compared to the ones which you might be able to get at something like justhost.com which says unlimited however when it says unlimited that is not a true unlimited um, it will be unlimited until you use a certain amount it will be like a fair use policy so if you go over say 10 gigabytes they could cut you off and you have no way of controlling that but if you have something where it's guaranteed 20 gigabytes, you have 20 gigabytes, no less and no more. Um, and you can always upgrade that to go up to a full terabyte anyway, and even after that you can upgrade even further. And so it's really not um, that bad, it's much much better to get dedicated or private hosting. And to go to a decent company like OVH and not something like Just Host, Hosting24 or something along those lines. Because the simply, right, the cheaper the quality, uh, the cheaper the price, the worse the quality is, and so it's always better to pay sort of mid range, which OVH is very good at doing. Um, my website zando.co.uk, um, that's hosted on um, OVH.co.uk. and you can see it's, well, you can see from the speed of it but it's actually a very good um, website look it's loading instantly basically I get 100 megabytes a second internet connection guaranteed um, I get um, a gigabyte of RAM guaranteed 512 megabyte burst of RAM which is like additional which I could receive um, I get 250 gigabytes and it costs me 20 pounds a month which is really good price for a dedicated server I have contr complete control over this server I can access it straight from here there we go this is me I got full access to my server by this I can install uninstall everything I want on there so it's perfect for whatever I want to do with it um, Right, now the next thing that, um, that would help you massively is to create a sitemap. Now sitemaps are generally in XML format, which is quite um, an easy format to use and is definitely an easy, like, easy to read format. Um, so if you go on here um, to xml-sitemaps.com I'll put the link in the sidebar and you um, simply just create fill in this form sorry uh, fill it in to have always um, in your change frequency use service response for the last modification and for priority put automatic priority um, and then click on start it has a maximum of 500 pages but it is very very useful to do it this way. Now, mine's counted 16 pages here. 
there's also said I've got a broken link and one page. I'll check that out at some other point. But for now, that doesn't matter to me. And from there, you need to go to... Um, Copy it over into your text editor and save it as sitemap.xml. Um, just gonna save this in top desktop. We'll come back to this file later on in the tutorial series, along with other ones such as robots.txt, which we'll create next video, I think. And um, we'll also have have to be start editing the um, content files to verify ownership of websites for Google Webmaster Control and Central. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, oh, there's another thing I forgot. Um, uh, I had an extra piece of paper here which I forgot I had. Um, this one is called Rewrite Dynamic URLs. And basically what you do is, as you can see here, you have, in this URL, you have um, question mark hl equals en and site url equals http um, touchbase.co.uk and then tts-cms.co.uk, blah, 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 all of that. Now, obviously, that's not very readable for a human eye. Like, I couldn't instantly tell that hl was something to do with language unless I saw the value added to it which is yeah. Hiya. Yeah. Um but okay. other than that so what you can do is something called HT Access where you have to install a Apache mod which is mod underscore rewrite. If you Google that there's lots of tutorials on how to install it if your host doesn't already have it. For example if you're using a dedicated server you'll need to install it yourself. Um and also, there's plenty of uh, tutorials on YouTube or Google. I think I've got one which does uh, dynamic URL rewriting. But if not, there's plenty on YouTube and Google which you can find, um, which will help you do it. And basically, what it would do is it changes. It would change something like that to a different page. Let's just get it to. It would change it to something like that. So it would instead show, um, say, category. Let's change that to product. So instead of showing category um, 456 and product 123, it might show computers slash. Mark that HTML, for example, and if that, if it was to do something like that, it would obviously be much much more readable. Even though you still can get the data from the database, and you don't have to create each page individually. It also helps when you do creating a site map if you have something like this, because it will index each separate page instead of going through just index.php and having thousands and thousands of entries of index.php, because it makes it look like you have less content. Uh, so that's the end of this tutorial, definitely now. Um, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we will start, we'll verify our ownership of a website. Um, and I will also show you how to upload, um, how to upload your um, sitemap and robots.txt file. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.